Hello class. Beginning soon, we're going to be talking about some descriptive and inferential statistics involving some simple calculations. First thing I want you to recognize is that this is not going to be difficult math. We're going to be adding, dividing, multiplying, subtracting, squaring numbers, and taking the square root. So just a simple calculator is really all you need. A good one that you might want to get, you can get for about $10, as the uh, TI-30 from Walmart. Uh, not expensive and does a lot of really good uh, calculations for this class. So I wanted to do two lectures. The first one we'll cover with the information on this board and then I will do a second one to talk about the different kinds of z-scores and t-scores and how to calculate those things. So to begin with we have to understand the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics simply summarize data. Like if we had a classroom with men and women in it, how many men are there? How many women are there? What percent of the total is female? Things of that nature. We're not drawing any conclusions. We're just telling what we have. Uh, inferential statistics, on the other hand, is where we actually use the data to make decisions. So for instance, if there's men and women in the room, uh, are there a significantly different number of Democrats than Republicans? In other words, does political party depend upon gender? We're using information to go beyond the description of the data to what the data seems to be telling us. Now, descriptive statistics involve these six main um, calculations. On the top here, I've written mean, median, and mode. That's what we call measures of central tendency, or average. All three of these are measures of average. What I've written below is the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. And these tell us the amount of variability. Are all the scores kind of really bunched up? If so, then the range and the variance would be small. Or are the scores really different from each other? The range and all those things would be much larger. So the larger these numbers, the more variability there is in the data. The smaller those numbers, the less variability there is. For inferential statistics, which I will do in a different video, I will be talking about z-scores and t-scores, as well as the t-test, the analysis of variance, and correlation and regression. So I've written a simple example here. I hope that you can see it from the uh, board, but I've got seven numbers, and you can see here I've written a capital letter N. In statistics, a capital letter N stands for the number of scores. Six, ten, eight, nine, six, three, and seven. Now these scores can be fractions, these scores can be negative numbers, these scores can include zero. I've just used some simple scores so we can do some hand calculations with them but there's nothing you know special about these numbers. You could look at it as you've got a small class of seven people who have taken a 10 point quiz and this is how they did. So we want to not make inferences yet, but we want to describe what the data looks like. So to do that, we can calculate the mean. The mean is equal to this little thing that looks like an E means add up, it's a capital letter sigma. So we're going to sum each individual score, and then we're going to divide by the number of scores. And if you add these scores up, it comes to 49, and 49 divided by 7 is 7. So the mean of these distribution is 7. The mode of the distribution is 6, because the score of 6 occurs more often than any other score. Uh, I didn't write the median down here. We don't usually calculate a median, but to do it, and this is something that you can do you know, on your own, see if you can do it. Order the scores from lowest to highest and find the middle score. The median is equal to the score that puts 50% of the scores on one side and 50% of the scores on the other side. It's just like the median on the interstate. Half the traffic's going north and half the traffic's going south, and the median separates the two halves. A little bit more complicated are the measures of um, dispersion or variability. Uh, but the first one is relatively simple. The range is just telling you to take the highest score and subtract the lowest score. So if we look at our data, T 
10 is the highest score and 3 is the lowest score, and it just so happens the range is 7. Now, that's just a coincidence. I just made these numbers up. The range, you know, is not going to equal the number of scores or anything like that. It just worked out that way. <coughs> but the most challenging will be these last two. <coughs> the variance and the standard deviation. One thing that you do need to know is that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. In other words, if you find the variance, which is just going to be a number, and then take the square root of that, then you've got the standard deviation. Okay, so let me fix this just a little bit. Some of this has moved, and this is the letter S for standard deviation. So the formula that's given in the classroom is looks a little bit complicated, but it really isn't. What it's saying is to take the sum of seven separate quantities. We're going to take the first score, subtract the mean, and square it. Then add to that the second score, subtract the mean, and square it. Then add to that the third score, subtract the mean, and square it. So you can see that the first score is 6, so 6 minus 7, because the mean is 7, uh, and square it. Okay, and that'll just be 1. Here's 10 minus three, uh, 7, and that's going to be 3, and 3 squared is 9. <clears throat> and then 8 minus 7, 9 minus 7, all of these numbers squared add up and divide by, this says n minus 1, so 1 less than the number of scores. So if you square these numbers and then add them, you'll get 32. And if you divide 32 by 6, you'll get 5.3. So the variance of this distribution is 5.3. But a more useful statistic for us is the standard deviation. And as I said a moment ago, all you need to do is to find the variance and take the square root of it, and we get 2.31 as our standard deviation. Notice that the smallest the standard deviation can be is 0, because if the standard deviation is 0, all the numbers are identical. There is no upper limit. The standard deviation could be 0 or anything positive. Notice also it can't be a negative number. Since we're squaring everything, anything squared is always a positive number. So even if we put minus signs in front of all of these, the variance would be the same as it is here and so with the standard deviation. So I hope that was helpful to you and I will come back in the second video and we will continue with this example looking at z-scores and t-scores and then some information about the four major kinds of uh, basic inferential statistics. Thank you.